Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. In this segment, we'll learn more about the Chicago Light Brigade and we'll join in an art making project organized by the group. The Chicago Light Brigade. And um, what are we doing here tonight? So every year the Chicago Light Brigade puts on a memorial for people yeah, so who have been lost to violence so that year in Chicago. Year and we try to address some of the systemic issues that are involved with the ongoing violence instead of just accepting the usual cry for more policing, more law enforcement, which we think the annual murder tolls prove just doesn't work. And that, that maybe it's possible there could be some type of um, maybe yeah. return okay. from the police forces and, and, and noticing that civilians are coming out and, and speaking out against violence. Do you think that there's any type of reciprocation possible that, that maybe they'll, they'll uh, have a, a, a stronger vetting process for their officers or any type of, uh, I mean, what, what do you expect to be able to achieve uh, from, from uh, citizens speaking up about, about this, uh, this excessive violence? Well, for the most part, we are not speaking to the police. Um, police, if anything, we want them to know that we're watching, that we're holding them accountable. But other than bearing witness to the damage that we do, we, that they do, we don't really feel that we're working with them to make things better. Community safety has to start with the community, working with each other to come up with alternatives to involving the state and them invoking violence. Here we are doing hundreds of lights and hundreds of origami lilies to represent the people who were lost to violence this year. And we're also going to have some imagery that we're going to invoke that will specifically address police violence. But one of the primary images will be sort of this, this row of lights and interwoven with these flowers that people are working on here. Thank you so much. Thank you. To see like citizen action and review committees. So having some kind of non-police community oversight, um, one would give a space for uh, when, when charges of excessive force right, are coming from the community, it would give a fair and neutral source um, for these issues to be taken. Right? It also would give an official space for community voice and also just like our other public service officers, police officers are supposed to serve the public. They're part of the public, they're intended to serve the public, but if there's no public voice or public oversight, in determining what those policies or practices are going to be, how could they serve us appropriately? So that isn't already currently being done? No? Um, you know, I know that there are some definite community calls I've seen, especially in the aftermath of the non indictment charges. Um, for Darren Wilson and for the officer in the Eric Garner case. I've seen some, some recent things here in Chicago where people are campaigning for an independent community review board for Chicago police. Science. And this year I think it's amazing that we're making little origami figures. There's a lot of detail and time that goes into each one. So I think that every amount of time that you designate to this is really just kind of setting aside that time to pay attention to the life of someone who has fallen and has been lost to not only police violence, but just street violence in general. And it's a time that we all need to take to really just take that into what that means in our communities and in our everyday lives, like how we can act as people that love each other and people that want to take accountability for our actions and also spread that love amongst our community so that we can get to a place where we don't have to live in a world where there are police, but we can imagine a world that looks different than that. Excellent. Thank you so much.